Hello everybody, how is it going? So, today, we're playing some Perona. Uh, first match against a Red Purple Law. This is just OPO6 Red Purple Law. Still quite a bit stronger than his, you know, OPO5 counterpart, just having Reiju and, uh, what's his name? Shuria? Shuria? However you say his name. The, the three drop that just matches your leader's strength. Really, really strong. Um, but yeah. We're, we're playing Perona, and this deck is a lot of fun. It's, um, I don't know, I feel like it it thrives off of its top end, but also, like, sometimes Gecko is really awkward in this deck, because you don't really have a direct outlet to get stuff in the graveyard outside of just countering or using brand new. So, kind of interesting there, but I do honestly think, like, just thinking about it in my head, I feel like this matchup wouldn't be the best, just because we're literally just hard playing stuff, you know, we don't have any way to cheat stuff out or kind of play multiple characters a turn outside of a drop gecko. But, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like this would be kind of harder. But we have decent answers to, you know, a lot of his cards with, uh, you know, it's pretty rare he plays above a 5 cost. Most cards he cheats off leader are obviously just 4. Uh, Kid is kind of like the biggest card they play, so... Like, Ryuma and extra get a ton of value in this matchup, which is awesome. But, Ryuma will very rarely get his the hidden effect of on KO, because he'll just get bottom tech most of the time. But honestly, like, that trade there felt pretty good. You know, just getting rid of a Beppo. But they still kind of, you know, won out on board, at least a little bit, with uh, still having the 5 drop there. We obviously established a 6k. I'm sorry, the 4 drop, 5k, you know. You know what I mean. <laughs> But he swings at us for 7, and we pick up a Gecko. And he goes 7 again, and uh, yeah, I, I could counter this. I don't think I do, though. Okay, I do. I'm a liar. <laughs> Going down, I don't know. This many cards does feel kind of bad. But we know we have our 8-drop, which will be in 2 turns, because we're on the odd curve. So, yeah. I Honestly, I feel like Red Purple Law wants to go first. I feel like a lot of their cards just fit the curve, but... Obviously, Perona does want to go second, so maybe he just wanted to take away the going second curve, which is fair. I understand. We're just going to tap one of the irons, swing six at it, he lets it go. Nice. <laughs> we just get to clear his whole board. And uh, we'll play down a Ryuma and a Rosinante. So that this kind of turn where I get to play two characters feels kind of good. Obviously, Rosinante is always going to be within leader ability range for him, but it kind of makes him choose. Uh, you know, leave an attacker on my field, which is also Ryuma, who technically has an odd KO effect. So, yeah, I feel like this turn was pretty efficient. Next turn, we're just gonna Gecko. I don't know what we have in Crave. It might not be much. <clears throat> I do think in one of the games today, I literally just play Gecko, and I play out two Corazones, which, like, honestly, doesn't feel the worst. You know, like, Corazon, even while rested, can defend your characters. Can't defend your life, but can defend your characters. He's gonna double fire fist, which is it's pretty raw, honestly. Um, but yeah, he clears my board back, which is funny. But you know, I only spent one card. He spent two, so I mean <clears throat> who's winning out there? I guess I technically played two, but it only took me one to remove his board. <laughs> but we grab another Ryuma. I really wish I had a Ryuma in graveyard, because the gecko value would go crazy here of just like tapping the Reju. Probably just playing the Ryuma rested and uh, <clears throat> like get, getting like an active Rosinante would go kind of crazy, <laughs> but we tapped his uh, Reiju and just swing six at it. I feel like the reason he's letting these go is just because he expects to just get Ryuma anyway, but he didn't or he wouldn't have, I guess, unless I wanted to pivot and play like Ryuma Borsalino, but I think that's just worse straight up. <clears throat> He's establishing a 9k body, which is already kind of hard for Law to deal with, plus two more bodies. Like, I don't think there's ever a reality where I cannot 8-drop there. Just gonna swing 5 at the core zone. And I had to think about it for a sec, but I'm like, I don't think I get punished at all by just taking the free block there. Like, sure, I guess Rush Zoro could just clear the Rosinante, but like, that's still kind of fine. Or like, Rush Zoro could just swing 6 in my life. But, like, who cares? <laughs> I mean, and that, and if he goes at life, I still keep my two blockers. If he goes at Ro Rosinante, I still have my Borsalino. And I have another one for next turn. 
if I need to continue walling up, but yeah, I think just taking that free block is fine. But it probably just means he's going to play a 4-drop Psyche. <laughs> it was a Zoro. Okay, so yeah, just go 6 at me. Yeah, I'll, I'll defend it. I feel like I could have taken that as well, but I guess having the 2-life buffer is probably stronger. And right here, yeah, that 8-drop Gecko is just doing nothing. So I figured, let me play the brand new to see if I can hit any uh, anything in Grave. But I don't. <clears throat> the one like decent option I had there was the was the Kuzan, but I have to take him because he's the only Navy in that batch. So yeah, a bit unlucky. I feel like the uh, the other kind of main way you get stuff in Graveyard is Sabo, because you can actually cater what you want in there. But we haven't seen any Sabos this game, so I mean, unlucky, but it's all good. This turn, we're probably just gonna Ryuma, the Zoro, maybe even play down the Kuzan, just to get him out of my hand. <laughs> like, I don't know. I could also just play another Porcelino, but I'm, I'm kind of risking it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, really, like, what is the punish, right? I Ryuma the Zoro, I play Kuzan, hopefully draw some counter. I don't, but I mean, whatever. And then I still have the one blocker, which I mean, yeah, he can just bottom deck, but <clears throat> He then needs two rush attacks, and like, yeah, I just don't think he can ever get there. Maybe an EBO1 when he has access to Kid and Killer, you know, just 4 drop 7k rush. Like, yeah, <laughs> I might have been a bit more scared to do, like, to swing with Borsalino that turn, but <clears throat> yeah, I think we're fine. He does have a Zoro, uh, kind of doesn't matter what he attacks at. I kind of assumed he was just going to play Zoro. Use leader, bottom my Rosinante, and then maybe just try to clear Borsalino or something. Could just go at life, but I think he knows that next turn, if he just goes at life, he's just dead. It might just kind of be the case regardless here. <laughs> um, I'm, I am going to use my my one, 1k one counter to defend that Borsalino, just to be obnoxious. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to go 5 at life. Again, I'm just trying to consider, like, is there anything that punishes me here? So I'm like, nah, then let's just take that life. There's no two drop rush. <laughs> At least not yet. Hopefully it sticks like that. But he is going to gamma knife the Borsalino. And then leader effect. And like it best maybe just brings out another rush attack. But yeah, that, that's the thing. I feel like 9k is such a bad number for law. Just because it's right above the just gamma knife range. So yeah, Gecko is too good. We're just going to start off with a 9. And like this will probably go through if it doesn't it eats up three cards from his hand and then we just poke him out with the rest of our characters and then uh we slowly put ten dawn on the ryuma i kind of wanted to put it on rosinante but i think that's a little bm so i didn't do it but yeah it definitely crossed my mind you know don't take it <laughs> don't think i didn't think of that um moving on yamato uh yeah i think this matchup I think it's okay for Perona, honestly. Dofi is very strong. Uh, you play Corazon, which is, you know, on curve, just getting down a little blocker is very nice. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think the matchup is fine. But he's playing the wall version. He's playing mono green Yamato. Let's go. I love this version. Uh, I just like green cards. <laughs> but we'll play down on a baby five in response to him playing baby five. I'm gonna pick up another baby five and uh be happy about it i also think the the green one drop searchers are like broken into yamato because like yeah sure he, i guess he could swing one at my baby five with his baby five but then he loses value on it and then i can just drop a 1k and force him to attack leader into the baby five so yeah but swings at the baby five regardless and next turn he's gonna play bonnie here uh, we'll probably just Ryuma one of the searchers, swing five at the other, and uh, be happy with that. He does whiff off Bonnie, which is, <laughs> for me, it's too lit. You know, I'm pretty happy about that, but <laughs> we'll go five at the Bonnie, and then we'll just play Ryuma, and we'll pass it back. I do think at some point, I might forget about leader effect. <laughs> we'll see if I can catch it, because there's a, I still think there's, I have two more games after this one, so we'll see if I forget about my leader effect at all. I do think uh, Perona Leader Effect is just very strong. It's, uh, I, I, you know, it's just, just so generically good. Just works with both colors, what you want to do. But you're just going to swing 10 at me. I'm just going to eat it. I can get down a blocker this turn, I guess. I feel like it was valuable. 
getting down uh, the Ryuma. Like, sure, I guess I could have bore Selena last turn, but eventually I'm going to take, you know, a double attack. It's just, it is what it is. But now at least we got attacker down. Now we have two blockers. One being just like a chump blocker, so I don't care if I have to block a big attack with that. Obviously just dissuades him for swinging big, unless he has an answer to, uh, to both my blockers. But gonna attack for eight at the Ryuma. I'm just gonna take the chump block, because I have a Sabo in hand, and the Borsalino will still be there next turn. Can't get a Maru just yet. And I don't even think, yeah, I know most versions of just pure green Yamato don't have a Maru, so. My Borsalino is pretty safe outside of just like Izo. So we're gonna get down a baby five, because in his board state, baby five is very annoying. <laughs> um, don't really wanna swing at the killer, so. Yeah, that's nice. And then we'll just poke him, probably get down. Could be the Sabo. We could also just ignore the Sabo and play like, I don't know, Kuzan, brand new. Okay, that's what we're doing. That's kind of based. <laughs> we know next turn is his, uh, is his eight cost kid. So maybe that's why I was doing that. But to be f completely fair, he probably could have just swung big. I either got a lot of cards from my hand or uh yeah i would have just eaten it but then again it like disrespects the baby five so yeah maybe it would, would in that scenario maybe it would just attack with the killer in the baby five and then swing big in my leader but like i still think we're in a fine spot if he does that because we have how many 2ks four five we have five 2ks right now i'll probably defend this you know borsalino because i know he's just gonna play eight drop kid so i don't really have to worry about like a hody I, I, Hody might be okay, but I think he'd just die if he Hody's right now. <laughs> like, next turn, if I don't out this kid, Hody would definitely be really strong. And I, right, you know, currently don't have an answer to it. What kind of sucks is that, like, you play x Drake and you play, um... You play Ryuma, and Ryuma isn't really searchable off anything, at least I don't think. I think, uh, you can add x Drake off of Brand New, but we did not hit. We've only seen one Brand New, so, I mean... Yeah, we don't have any of our removal in our hand. I baby five for the sake of it's a free card. I find a ten drop, which genuinely is pretty strong into eight drop, just you know, relieving the pressure for a turn and establishing a big body to attack the kid. But yeah, I do get to rest the killer, and I'm just gonna attack ten at the kid. Obviously, there is no reason to rest Rosinante. Because he can just do the same thing he would do otherwise while he's rested. And we do get two cards from his hand. And I'm just going to go 10 again. Obviously not going to swing with the Kuzan at all. Until I have an actual removal card to get rid of this kid. I alternatively could have just like attacked 10 with Ryuma. And then played down like a Sabo. In hopes that I find removal. But I feel like I want to continue the pressure. I want to make sure he has to drop a blocker every turn to keep this kid around. Because you always need two blockers against Prona. At least all the little ones. And I don't think the mono green version of Yamato plays anything above like a three cost blocker. So yeah, definitely worth to um, kind of just attack this kid. He's already pretty low in hand. so And we are going to defend uh, Ryuma because it's our only like real attacker right now. You know, two Don is still a lot to swing at kid, but it's better than <laughs> everything else on my board, so we'll take it. And he plays another kid and drops down a Rosinante. We top deck an X Drake. Thank God <laughs> we can answer at least one of these kids. I'm gonna just try. Yeah, I think I end up playing this turn a bit differently. I'm just gonna swing 10 at one of them because I need to get a block out to make sure Rosinante doesn't just like stuff my X Drake. And I almost forgot about that. <laughs> I think I just lose the game if I play into that. But thankfully, yep, just swing in 10. Eats up the Rosinante. We'll go 5. Reduce the kid by 4. And we at least get to get rid of one of them. <laughs> Alright. We'll take it. He's still very low in hand size. You know, we're, we're getting there. We don't really die for a pretty long time, honestly. And at this point, we'll probably let go of our Ryuma if he does swing at it. Because we at least have the extra hike now. We could also just 10 drop next turn. So, yeah. Same thing goes for, like, Kuzan. If he swings at it, probably just end up letting it go.
because putting myself on top deck removal next turn like isn't super likely so we'll just let them go they can just be blockers for us for now goes five down on Yamato okay so he really wants this Kuzan gone I think that's fine with me because even if I block he'll just swing big at it with kid and we'll be sad so I imagine he still wants to get another blocker down so this three dawn could be either for like a two drop blocker plus like dawn on killer and then yeah I can leader effect to put two dawn on kid and he does use leader effect go two dawn on kid attack my Ryuma at least Ryuma gets a little bit of a trade there into the baby five you know not bad and he gets down a Monet we top deck a gecko so if we somehow kept that Kuzan alive we could have answered this kid but instead we're just gonna 10 drop and uh, we get to freeze a blocker kid and his leader so once again I put him on you have to play another blocker plus you know whatever else <laughs> plays another kid my god I don't remember that I thought there was only two here comes the third one that's funny but yeah plays another kid into another Monet and I'm like okay you have one card in hand I'm pretty sure I can out both the kids because this will just eat a block because you have to yep and then we'll probably honestly most of our dawn will probably just go to attacking this turn and then we'll play maybe a core zone to hopefully stay alive he lets the kid go at just an 8k swing so i'm like okay let me just guarantee get rid of the other one yeah i kind of doubt it's a 2k in hand but let's play around it <laughs> just in case and uh yep we let it go then we'll just trade the rest of our cards into his blockers and uh probably just get down the rosinante and pass like i'm trying to think if hody even does it here i don't think it does because i'd get out of the leader swing and then hody would just be like a 10k attack which is whatever but yeah we end up winning that one very good moving on katakuri <laughs> uh we love katakuri but yeah i don't think the matchup is too bad for perona i feel like you're, you're like green so like you have some decent blockers into it gecko is very strong and just going wide it's just a matter of kind of setting up the gecko and we even have a kuzon which is nice but we don't really play many other outlets to like reduce stuff um i thought about like maybe ice age would be good but then i feel like you're spending a lot of cards which and prona doesn't really have a i feel like a way to go super plus or anything like that so yeah i don't know i feel like is, I don't know. I don't know how solved Perona is, honestly. Um, right here, also, I could have rested Perospero and attacked it. But I think uh, oh, <laughs> we get onami Very annoying. Uh, I, don't know, I, I guess swinging into Perospero and Leader is almost the same thing. Because if they just let Perospero go, they get a card back, which feels kind of bad. And I mean, next turn, we can just X Drake the Perospero. So I think that was the thought process for now gonna attack me for seven i will eat that get uh the zero cost event uh what's the whole name whoever wins this war becomes justice <laughs> we'll use that to tap the uh the Paro sparrow which is nice you know if he if all he was doing this turn was swinging we prevent a really big swing there and uh, it looks like that's all he was doing because he decides to swing with the pudding so we take that <laughs> um i think i debated clearing the pudding I don't think I end up doing it I kind of don't want to swing at the Kuzan so I'm gonna just kind of leave that there I think he does something funny <laughs> yeah he, he betches my Kuzan and I was like okay sweet I guess I'll just do what I was gonna do regardless but you dropped the card feels good <laughs> um yeah I don't think did he know that was top five did he I mean he attacked with leader right so why didn't he put that on the bottom maybe he misclicked that I don't know kind of weird but yeah we just extra can pass he attacks me for five i feel like i can't take a 5k at this point in the game he plays seven mom we have to heal him and honestly like it's not looking too great i don't have removal for the seven mom uh i do have two ten drops which like maybe can carry me a bit we'll go six probably just we're probably gonna get go this turn and i don't think i have really any good options outside of Rosinantes. So I think this is just when I play double Rosinante. 
Which, I mean, isn't the worst. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna play two Rosinantes. He gets an Okiku trigger. It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> we'll play double Rosinante. I think that's so funny. I don't know. There's just something about it. And, like, it's not even that bad. <laughs> like, come on. So, yeah, he's at 9 Dawn. At least he's at 9 Dawn, you know. It could be worse. It could be worse. Also, I think this game and the next game, because I do end up playing two games against this Katakuri, I think he chose to go first both times. So maybe he felt bad for me. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Very nice of you. But he's going to play the Pudding, pick up a 10-drop, Impending Doom. Very sad. He's going to go 8 at the extra ache. I'm going to use the Rested Rosinante, because he could very easily just clear that Rosinante with the Pudding. But he chose not to, so I'm gonna take my value. It's gonna go six at the X Drake. This X Drake is probably just gonna get bullied down. It's gonna go seven at it. Probably just gonna block with the Rosinante. Get our value out of it for now, I guess. Yep. And uh, it looks like he has seven down remaining, so I think he's gonna seven drop again. I think it's a good estimate. I'm wondering if I could have ate these two life. But I just don't think there's any reality where I could do that and, like, not just die. So, yeah, we're going to heal him again, which is unfortunate. But we do get to Tendofi, the 7-drop, uh, the which is nice. Almost canceled that Kuzan ability. That would have been bad. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't. Yeah, we'll just stack for 5, reduce Big Mom by 4. And I think I'm going to swing at this Okiku, which seems crazy, but I'm trying to stay alive, so... I'm going to probably just tap the big mom with my leader, 10 drop, the two big moms and leader, if he lets this Okiku go, which I mean, surely he will, right? I mean, it's just a free heal at this point. Going to be back at five life, so we're going to assume he'll let that go. Alternatively, I guess I could have just started, you know, just kept attacking life, which might have been better. I feel like I kind of slowed it down a bit too much here, which is very possible. I even attacked the big mom. My leader and my gecko might have just gone into life, but I don't know. I feel like if I hit life there, it just becomes more triggers, <laughs> which is exactly what happens, which is unfortunate, but you know, whatever. We're still going to 10 drop, freeze everything. We know he has a 10 drop. It's looking bad. <laughs> we don't really have an answer to his board at all. And he's on four life. So I think, I think I dug myself a hole in this game. Maybe should have just kept attacking life, been a bit more aggressive. But with my hand, I feel like I had no counters. Like, if I go for life, I just die. <laughs> I don't know. We could test 10 drop again and hope for the best. Which I mean, like, we kind of can live. It just depends. We're going to go 5 at the Sanji, reduce Big Mom. Just kind of for fun. <laughs> I mean, we don't have a way to pop anything. So, yeah, just... We'll reduce it to scare him, as if we have like an Ice Age and an x Drake or something. <laughs> okay, he lets it go. Very good. We're gonna tap pudding and just clear the pudding because we're trying to live. <laughs> we'll go with six at life. The rest of these attacks will just go at life. He'll get a sure Hoshi trigger, which yeah. I mean, it could, it could be worse. It could be like an actual attacker. Uh, I like thought of trying to, to clear the big moms, but I was like, nah, there's just no way. Go 9, no trigger, 10, mm, hopefully no trigger. Yeah, maybe. Oh, oh, Nami trigger. Honestly, I'll take that. I'll take that over an attacker. And then we will 10 drop, freeze the two 7 moms and leader. And then we get 10 dropped, and uh, we absolutely do not have 12k counter. So <laughs> we end up losing that. But I do get a rematch, which I was happy about. Uh, I, I feel like... Whenever I play against Scott Curry with like slower decks, I, like game one is just terrible. I feel like I just get rolled. But yeah, we do get the run back. Uh, hand is looking pretty good. Do have the extra. Don't have any Ryumas, but I think it'll be okay. Maybe five will hopefully find at least one Tendofi. It's probably all we are gonna need. So yep, we'll play baby five, and we find a Dofi. Actually, our only option is the Dofi. So. Good thing we hit it. And we'll pass. He still chose to go first. Like, I don't know. He just clears the baby five and then plays down a Parasparrow. We'll pick up a, another X Drake. Uh, 
we can tap the Pero Sparrow and just go five at it. Which I mean, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. He does defend it very quickly. <laughs> I feel like I didn't even see him drop the card, but yeah, count is for one, and then we'll just play Borsalino. Uh, immune from Gadatsu was kind of the mentality there. I think all my other options would have just got Gadatsu. To be fair, it was just like double brand new was my only other play. So yeah, Borsalino felt okay. This turn, we're just gonna X-Drake Paro Sparrow, and uh, yeah, I think <laughs> that's about it. It's five Dawn over a six Dawn. It's really the only thing we can do. We might honestly start swinging with this Borsalino, just because we have to, like, be aggressive, so, yeah. He goes 2 Dawn on the Paro Sparrow. 3 Dawn on the Paro Sparrow. <laughs> Tax me for 8. Alright, I'll eat that. So then I imagine it's just another 2 Dawn on the leader, and attack me for 8 again. Which I think I'm just going to take as well, because I guess it's better than getting our life trashed in late game, so yeah. We find an 8-drop, which uh, might be decent in this game. I gotta take a look at my graveyard and see if it's going to do anything at all. But we're definitely just X-Draking. We're going to go 5 at life. See, like right here, if I got like onami on the board, so you know, I, might, I feel like I just lose. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's so bad. And then I'm like... I'm just gonna swing with it. I'm just gonna go six with it. Cause I mean, at most I'm getting attacked once next turn. So it's not that bad. I guess unless he's playing like seven and L, then I guess I could get attacked twice. But having Borsalino rested, like it's kind of nice if he wants to swing into it because it's a six K rather than my leader just being a five. So yeah, that's the mentality. And uh, he takes it, which is awesome. <laughs> Very good. And we're gonna just extra extra get Paro Sparrow. Hope he whiffs. He doesn't whiff, he gets another 10 drop. But again, he's like going first and he delayed his own 10 drop. Kind of weird. I don't know. Is on seven though. We could definitely just get seven mommed, which at this point I think we do still have to heal him. But he's actually just gonna attack for eight at the Borsalino, I assume. Yep. And now we're probably just gonna let that go because it gives us a decent target for our eight drop. <laughs> yeah, we have Borsalino and a baby five. And he plays Gidatsu with, you know, nothing to pop. We're just going to go 6, then 5. And then player 8 drop. He'll counter for 2. Counter for 1. Very good. Play 8 drop. <laughs> just bring back the 2 that I can. I guess I could have bought back Borsalino rested, but he does have 2 attacks. And uh, it's kind of nice being able to defend something if I need to. I don't know. Honestly, this turn, I probably was never using the Porcelino. So maybe I was just supposed to ring baby five in attack. I don't know. But regardless, I guess baby five is still kind of a blocker. Psych. It got Kadatsu. It was not a blocker. So actually, it didn't matter. <laughs> I was supposed to ring Porcelino back in attack. Or active, not in attack. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. But he's just going to attack for eight at the extra which we might just let go. I, I thought about countering this just because I wanted him to swing with his Gadatsu, but I let it go anyway, and I'm just going to hope he swings with his Gadatsu. I don't know. I feel like unless he's like actively trying to play around 10 drop, you're always just going to swing with the Gadatsu. And he does, so we'll be happy about that. We'll just drop a 2k, and next turn we are just 10 dropping. Probably even just gonna swing with the Borsalino because why not? No harm in it. Should probably swing with it first, honestly. <laughs> and I think I thought about it. Yeah, I did. Like, yeah, attack with that first because it'll probably get Thunderbolted or something. So he takes. It doesn't get Thunderbolted. Very good. We'll go five again. And then we'll go nine, which, like, should put him to one. Probably. And then a 10 drop will hopefully just seal the game, even if he plays a 10 drop of his own. Unless I just get, like, like two crazy triggers from his life, which is possible. You know, last life being Beji isn't too crazy. But I think I just kind of have to go for it regardless next turn. Well, maybe I could wall up. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. But this 9k should go through, hopefully. He dropped a 2k on our 5k attack, which is always a good sign <laughs> that he doesn't have... Probably doesn't have any 1ks. It's probably pretty low on 2ks now, so... 
We're looking good. He does take. Is there a trigger? Show me a trigger. Nope. I was uh, also pretty happy because I did. I held leader effect there in case he like triggered uh, an Okiku. So I could have been able to, you know, freeze that alongside the Gidatsu and leader. But instead, we'll just freeze the pudding because why not? One less attack, I guess. He'll go six at the Borsalino. We will defend. And uh, yeah, I do. I think I just go for game now. <laughs> To be fair, uh, it's like, you took the 9 last turn, you probably don't have a 10, so, and now you triggered Perispero, which means, like, you have less cards in hand for me to worry about. Even if this is a Beji, I just end up splitting on my, either my Borsalino, or not splitting, but just going all Dawn on either my Borsalino or Leader, and, uh, we do end up getting that win, and, uh, those are all the games I have for you today. Uh, the deck is, like, it's definitely good, but it's, it's just, like different i guess you know i feel like eight drop is still a very strong card but i feel like you almost have to go out of your way to establish the eight drop to be fair i don't think in any of these games i played a sabo so maybe it would feel a bit better you know playing a sabo and getting to get stuff in my graveyard that i choose but regardless those are the games deck is a lot of fun and uh yeah uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one